Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel and welcome to this very interesting series of videos related to electromechanical conversion systems. And as you can see here on the screen, we are moving to another topic and we are starting with the DC machines or direct current machines. Direct current machines used to be quite used in the past especially the DC motor, because the DC motor was very attractive for some applications where you need to change the rotational speed or have some very specific characteristic related to the torque. On the other hand, the DC generator, it was quite attractive of during the very early stage of the power industry. In fact, it was used for a while for producing electricity at the very, 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 very beginning of the power utilities in some places. And also the interest was high for transmission, for DC transmission. However, DC machines, they have the commutator and in this commutator, you must know that there is requirement for maintenance. So one of the main issues that made the DC machines to be not so popular in recent time is related with the cost of this maintenance for DC machines. So today, many of the industrial environments, what you will find is basically induction motors because the cost of power electronics and making easy to control the rotational speed and the torque has been made very simple in those days. So DC machines are a very important topic in this course of electromechanical conversion system because it will allow us to understand many other things happening with other AC rotating machines. So today I have this very simple, uh, very simple numerical example. However, it's extremely, extremely important when you are understanding the basic of rotating machines. So without further delay, let me start this explanation. Okay. And let's start reading this very interesting statement. A coil with thousand turns and a cross-section area of 0.25 square meters is rotating on a rotational speed of 75 radians per second. And all of this inside a magnetic flux density of B equals 0.01 Tesla. So here there is a simple question and is to calculate the RMS value of the MMF generated. So be careful because here the question is related to RMS value. So the first step in the solution, the first step here in the solution is that you must remember this very important, very important equation. And this equation is basically telling you that if we have a coil, let's say that coil is basically a square and this coil is inside a magnetic field and is rotating and there are some current going in this coil. So when this rotates, you will have some induced voltage. So now the question here, the question here is that basically we want to know, we want to know that in this case, what is the induced voltage? And the induced voltage depends of the number of turns. I mean, the number of turns that we have here on the coil, the magnetic flux density, if we have here some magnetic flux density, and the cross-section area, and you can imagine here, like this is the cross-section area. And finally, the rotational speed. 
So this equation is extremely and extremely important for you. So to obtain the induced voltage is basically substituting these numbers over here. But what you need to understand is that when this, when this uh, winding is rotating, this coil is rotating, is inducing a perfect, this is inducing a perfect, this is the maximum value, this is inducing a perfect um, sine wave. So with this equation, what we are calculating is the maximum value or the peak value of that sine wave. So it's a numerical substitution. We have here 1000 turns, that is N. We have here B, that, that is the magnetic flux density. We have here A, that that is the cross-section area here in this coil. And we have the rotational speed, 75 radians per second. So when we put the number together, the induced voltage is 187.5 volts. But is what is extremely important for my students to understand is that that is the maximum value. And we have been asked here for the RMS. So the other thing that my students must remember is from circuit theory, from circuit theory, when we have a pure and perfect pure sine wave, there is a relationship between the maximum value and the RMS value. And that is this equation over here. The RMS value of a perfect pure sine wave is the peak value d pi by square root 2. And in this very specific case mm, that we are working here, we already know the peak value and what we need to do is divide by square root 2. But be careful, my dear students, remember always this equation is only valid for the perfect sine, perfect sine wave, okay? So with the appropriate substitution, numerical substitution, the RMS value will be 187.5 divided by square root 2. And this is the brilliant answer that we were looking for to the question that we got. And the RMS value will be 132.5 volts. And I always suggest my students to include this remark over here, RMS value, okay? Because you must understand that this is a root mean square that is the RMS value. Well, um, this is a very simple exercise. It was just an application of this very important equation. And that very important equation is used in this new topic that we are covering now, DC machines. So I hope that you find useful and clear the explanation in this solution. However, if you have any question or you have any comment, please um, leave a comment here on the video or feel free to drop an email to my personal account. And also, if you find those useful and you want to keep updated about the next coming videos, I highly, uh, I highly suggest that you subscribe to the channel. And in that way, you will be receiving alerts when we are mm, creating new videos. Well, this is all for this video today. Very simple, but very important for the background of DC machines. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you at the next video. And it's time to say bye now.